Hello and welcome to part 20 of the Tim Burton style character series. This is David Ward and when last I left you we had uh, completed the clothing arrangement for Elizabeth. Go ahead and center that up. Um, now we're going to go in and get the rig readjusted to where uh, it fits the new proportions and everything. It's not a lot different but it's different enough to where we kind of need to go back to the drawing board. So let's turn on the layer that has the the uh, you know the rig. Uh, the Rigify version of the rig. And before, actually, before I do that, let's go over here. Yeah, it's just making sure all the facial rig controls are, are copied over, which they were. So good. Now, uh, to select the rig, the Rigify version of the rig, and just go to object mode, and we're just going to delete it out. Let's get rid of it all together, and we'll turn back the layer on that has uh, her base mesh. And let's go ahead and turn the mask off for now. Or just turn the eyeball off. It's still render because the camera thing there is turned on but uh, now we'll go ahead and turn on the layer that has the uh, the original base rig so you can you can copy this over to another one um, and and keep that base rig there untouched but since you know I saved it for this particular purpose I'm gonna go ahead and and start adjusting it so there's not a lot of adjustments that need to be made mostly it's gonna be on the hands. So we'll grab this hand here and let's go to our top view and make sure that our x-axis mirror is turned on. It is. Good. So we'll go ahead and scale that down to where these fingers match up with the smaller hand that we gave uh, to Elizabeth here. The more feminine, smaller, petite hand. So we'll go ahead and situate that to where it needs to go. Make sure the elbow and everything's lined up properly. Shoulders good and since we have the mirror turned on it automatically copied over to that side as well so let's go ahead and do the same thing on the feet just go ahead and grab this whole area here and actually I want to deselect this half okay so we'll go ahead and scale that down we'll go to our side view scale it down and move it over the ankle about to right there and then let's go ahead and grab the toe and drag that down up to there and the heel let's go ahead and drag that down to about there and then maybe take this whole controller there and just make it level with the ground plane. Okay, so now we'll go to the front view and line that ankle back up there. Okay, and let's drag the knee down just a tad. And maybe the hips up a little bit. And the pelvis is going to need to come forward a little bit there. Like so. And mostly everything else is pretty well the same. So let's go ahead and grab, tab out, grab her mesh and turn off the scalp hair for now. Um, I think everything else is pretty well all set so we can go ahead and tab out and go ahead and run the Rigify uh, script again. Let me make sure that's still turned on. Let's go ahead and type in here into the search Rigify. Okay, it's not turned on. Let's go ahead and check that. X out. And we'll go ahead and spacebar Rigify. You, you can either hit spacebar and type it up in the search or uh, you can come over here in the rig settings, scroll all the way down to rigify buttons and go ahead and hit generate. And that's doing the exact same thing, so it's going to generate that whole new rig. So, uh, let's go ahead and move that back to the layer I like to put it on. There we go. I'll go ahead and grab this facial rig. And let's go ahead and move that over to the other layer as well. Okay. And now if you like, you can go ahead and just go ahead and get rid of that base rig if you want. I'll, you know, I'll go ahead and leave it there, but... Uh, it, any other characters that I would make with this same style, I'd probably use uh, the original Tim. So, um, like I said, you can get rid of that if you like, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. So anyways, let's go ahead and turn the layer on that, on that has the new rig, and let's combine this facial controls to it. So we'll hold down Shift, select uh, the rig, and go ahead and hit Control J, and it'll join them together, and then disappeared, and that's because, as we did with Tim, it puts it on this layer here. Okay, so now uh, all we have to do with her, since we already have all of the vertex groups and everything set up, the only thing we really need to do to apply that rig is instead of parenting like we would have done before, like hold down shift and control P, you know, like that and say automatic weights. Instead of doing that, don't do that because if you do that, it's going to put another armature modifier on here. Then you'll have two of them and it just won't, uh, it just won't be, you know correct so anyways uh, all we have to do now is under the object just go rig and tell you what let's go ahead and rename this Elizabeth underscore rig there we go 
And so now we have Elizabeth Rig as the armature. And if we turn the pose mode on here, you can see all of those shape keys and everything that we, or not shape keys, but all of the, uh, uh, the vertex groups and everything that we applied for each one of these uh, bones and everything is still going to be on there. Let me turn off the FK layers. There we go. And I guess I need to go ahead and turn that on and turn off the fingers for now and turn that on. And so you can see it still controls everything properly. And since we made the finger bones and everything smaller, you can see that those will now deform the fingers like they're supposed to. If we would have done it before, like, let me undo that. Let me go ahead and save this. And I'll show you. Let me open up part 19. You can see what it would have looked like before if we not had not uh, adjusted the rig. So let's go ahead and turn this rig back on. Uh, turn the fingers on, which is where it's really obvious. So if we go ahead and scale the fingers there, you can see that they do not bend properly at all. So that's why we needed to go in there and, and adjust the base rig and then go ahead and redo it. So let's go ahead and open back number 20. And you can see that those deform just like they're supposed to now. So okay, go ahead and clear out everything there. And there's a couple other things we need to do. Uh, clear out the scale as well, um, and that's the the facial controls. Since we renamed everything, uh, they're still looking for uh, probably the Tim rig. So let's go ahead and go to our our uh, graph editor, turn on drivers, and it's going to spread this out and expand that, and let's go ahead and start at the top. And you can see that it doesn't know where to look now. So we just have to say it's going to be Elizabeth rig. And it goes ahead and copies the, or it defines the correct bone already, so it already has that. So we just have to copy this, just mouse over and hit Control C, and then we'll just go through like we did before, and just paste it, each one of these, into there. And once we finish up, all of the facial controls will then work properly, like they're supposed to. So just a little bit of tediousness to to create a, another character out of one character, but in the end, it's a lot faster than doing everything from scratch again. So, almost there. One more, and done. Okay, so now let's go ahead and collapse that window back. Go ahead and save. And if we wiggle these controllers. Oh, okay, one more thing we need to do. Uh, go back to graph editor, drivers, and go ahead and select her. Go ahead and select all of them and go channel. Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe it's under key. There's uh, some place to reset, reset everything. Let me see. Uh, let me <laughs> let me pause the recorder and, and I'll find it and I'll show you. Hold on just a second. Okay, I was looking for the wrong thing. I was looking for reset, but it's up here. Revive disabled F curve. So go ahead and click that, and then we'll go ahead and collapse these back. And now everything will work the way it's supposed to. Now, if you like, you can go in and tell you what, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and set these uh, bones up. Go ahead and turn on X axis again uh, to where they actually match, match the smaller face that Elizabeth has here. And let's go ahead and turn on X-ray for that as well. And I think that should be pretty well set. Good. Oh, okay, we need to drag them in as well as we made that a little smaller too. Okay. So there we go. So we'll go ahead and save that. And so she's pretty well ready to animate now. Everything's all set back up. All the bones and everything are deforming properly. Um, so just we need to uh, make sure that the clothing is now following along. So go ahead and turn on the clothes layer. Let's grab the shirt first off. If I can get in there and grab it. There we are. Do the same thing here uh, under the armature. Let's go ahead and pop that up above subsurf. And object is going to be Elizabeth Rig. There we go. And then... 
uh, it should still have all the correct vertex groups. And like I said before, even though it's got a, it's cut in half, the mirror is up above the armature, so it's doing kind of the virtual uh, vertex groups. So it'll still deform on both sides, even though there's only actually half of it there. So one more thing, grab the skirt or the dress there, and go ahead and say Elizabeth Rigg. Okay, so she's pretty well all set. This <laughs> this uh, was a lot quicker than I expected. Uh, I was kind of expecting this to take up a whole part, but uh, no big deal. Let's go ahead and clear everything out. Now, um, I guess I'll go ahead and, and do some cloth simulation here. Now, one thing that's very important when you're doing cloth simulation is um, any things that are going to interact with each other, for example, our dress and uh, Elizabeth's body, her legs, anything that's going to interact, they need to be on the same layer. So, let's go ahead and grab all the clothes and hit M, and we're going to move them to the same layer that uh, her body's on. And, and for now, we can go ahead and turn off the rig layer. Okay, so, uh, on the clothes, the only part I want to be um, dynamic to interact as a soft clothing item is the the bottom part, the billowy part. I want the top vest part to stay put. I don't want it to be simulated at all. So what I have to do is create a vertex group that is going to single out the, the dress. So let's go ahead and grab the, uh, the object data tab and let's go ahead and create one more vertex group here and we're gonna call this dress flow or whatever else you wanna call it. And we'll tab into edit mode. And let's select all of this. And this is going to be, oops, don't want that loop. There we go, that whole loop there. This is going to be all assigned to that group. And then this loop, and we'll go ahead and assign that a weight of one as well. And then as we get up to the body, I want to start lowering the weight. So let's go ahead and make this one 0.5. Go and assign, and then this one will be 0.2 and assign, and then maybe with this this one here will make that 0 0.05, very small amount. So we'll tab back out, and let's see what it looks like in the white paint mode. Grab that vertex group, and good. Everything that's red is going to be billowy, floating down, and everything that's blue is going to stay right where it's at and that's called pinning, and I'll, I'll show you that here in a second. So let's come back out of object mode, and really, uh, the, uh, the cloth modifier works best if you have an animation set up already, for example, uh, a walk cycle or something to that effect, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, how it works just with her standing here. So there's a couple things I need to do before I turn on the simulation. We're going to grab her base, uh, her base a mesh and go to our physics panel, and now under cloth, actually t not cloth, X that out, we're going to turn on collision. And um, I think that's probably about all we need to do on that. So now we'll grab the dress and now we'll say cloth. And we're going to say pinning. And honestly, you know what? I think I did the wrong thing. I think I need to pin. Yes. Uh, on the vertex group we created for the dress. Uh, I did it the opposite of what it needed to do um, because, well, uh, when we're pinning, we're, everything that's pinned is going to stay put. It's like it's pinned to the wall, as it were. So we don't want to pin the skirt. We want to pin the vest part. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and redo this. Uh, we'll just select all of this and just remove it. Okay. And then we'll select all of this. Zoom in here. Select that whole group and then this whole group. Good. And go ahead and assign that at a 1.0 scale. And then let's go ahead and grab this loop here. And this is going to be about, let's see, what did we do? About 0.5 there. And assign that and grab this one and 0.2 there and assign that. So now let's see what that looks like. Weight paint mode. Okay. So that should be. That should be good. Okay, so all, everything that's red is going to stay pinned. It's going to stay put. Okay, so back to object mode. Back to the clothing sets. Now, there's some presets here that you can use. Um, let's go ahead and choose, oh, I don't know, just cotton, I guess. I think that's probably the default settings. 
So uh, cloth cache, if you like, you can uh, have it saved to your disk. And then uh, you can set the file name in here. I'm not sure where it's going to put it though, so I'm gonna turn that off. Cloth collision, turn on self collision. That'll make it go a little, it'll take a little longer, but you won't have the cloth going through itself. So go ahead and turn that on. And quality, let's set that up to five. And the quality here, let's make that two. Um, and start frame of one, end frame of 250, good. So what's gonna happen here is when we hit bake, it's going to bake this simulation and it's gonna have this cloth kind of float down and kind of just hang there as it would as if it was real cloth. Now, in your animation, uh, you know, say she starts walking, well, her dress isn't gonna be billowed out at the beginning, you know, so it's best if, if you're gonna have like a walk cycle, start the walk cycle at, you know, well, start it off so the cloth can kind of get organized to the motion of the legs, but don't start the rendering uh, and the actual animation output until, say, frame you know, 50 or 60 so that cloth has time to, to go down and settle, maybe even further than that. So anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and hit bake, and it's going to take a little while. You can see this little black square that came up. Uh, shortly, we'll see a number appear in that, and that will be the percentage of time done and it looks like it's going to take quite a little while so let me go ahead and just wait till it has at least one percent do 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 okay well it looks like it's going to take a little while so i'll tell you what i'll go ahead and pause recording and uh, after that uh, calculates out the bake uh, we'll come back and see what it looks like so uh i'll be right back real quick while it's going um uh, I went ahead and it was taking forever, still taking forever, but uh, I went ahead and uh, set the quality the, the quality back down to the default setting, the uh, original to, or the, the normal quality to two, and then the self-collision. Can't see it, I can't scroll down, uh, but I, I set that back down to one, so it's just the default two settings. And I also forgot to turn on the, the uh, pinning for that dress flow vertex group, so I went and added that. So now we can see it, it's at 1%, and... Uh, yeah, this is going to take quite a little while, so again, I'll go ahead and pause recording, and we'll come back once it's done. So, see you then. Okay, so that's all done baking now. That took about 30, 45 minutes or so. I, don't, I didn't really keep track of exactly how long it took, but now you can see there's a blue, a dark blue line here, purplish line. That means that's all baked out. There's a dynamic interaction going on there. So if we scroll our slider, you can see that the dress falls into place and kind of just hangs there uh, like so. So you do the same thing now when you want to animate. So you would uh, set your animation up and then you would bake the uh, the, the, the dress to, excuse me, the, the cloth to, to interact. So uh, another thing you can do, say for example you don't want to you know, say she's just standing there and you're just going to kind of see the top half. You don't really want to mess with baking the cloth so there's one thing you can do uh, here. You can apply this this newly uh, formed cloth drape. You can apply that as a shape key. So if we hit that, boom, it kind of disappears. But then if you go to your object data, come down here to shape keys, you can see it now has a cloth setting, and you can run that all the way up. And for some reason, it's not showing. Hmm. Um, well, that should should be there. Let me uh, let me play with it a little bit and see if I can't figure out why that did not actually create a key for that. So hold on just a sec. Okay. Now, after much deliberation, actually not that much. I figured it out pretty easily. Uh, the cloth modifier needed to be at the top of the stack before the subsurf, and that's why uh, it wasn't creating a shape key. So now, since I bumped it up and I recalculated the cloth simulation, and as you can see, it's a little bit better. It's uh, not quite as wrinkly as it was. You can change some of the other settings too and make it more or less uh, stiff, but for now we'll just go with this. So we'll just bump it all the way up to the end of the, the uh, simulation, excuse me, and uh, go ahead and apply as shape key. So like I said, 
if you're wanting to do an animation that's just like her just like standing there, no motion in the dress or anything, you don't want to have to calculate all that animation for her just to stand there, you can apply that as a shape key and then just boom, you can see now it's part of that. So there you go. Okay, so um, I think that pretty well covers everything uh, that I'd like to cover in part 20 here. Um, not sure what I'm going to do in part 21. Maybe we'll do uh, some animation or something to that effect. Or I know what I'll do. I'll show you how to bring two of the, these two characters into the same scene. So um, that's what we'll learn in part 21. So thank you for watching part 20, and I'll catch you uh, in part 21.